<laughs> Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Maui says hello. Oh, you're so special. Hi guys, I hope you're doing amazing. I have a headache. Full disclosure, I'm not feeling too hot right now. I feel like when I talk to you guys though, I always kind of get myself into a little bit of a better mood. Hi! <laughs> so, that's good. I don't know. I just I'm not feeling the greatest. I think it's just the weather has not been agreeing with me lately. It's always gray. Sun has just disappeared. I know Maui. And I don't know, it just, it gives me a headache. So I'm not feeling the greatest, but I told myself that I was gonna film every single Wednesday so I could post every single Saturday. So we're filming whether I feel like it or not. So yeah, anyways, the plan for today, we are going to be making some Nanaimo bars. I haven't made these in forever. I'm really excited. Nanaimo bars are by far one of my favorite, <laughs> one of my favorite desserts. Yes, you're so cute. And especially mint, which we're gonna be doing today. And we're gonna be making it fully from scratch. So right now in the oven, I have homemade graham crackers. I will, <laughs> silly boy. He loves to rub his nosy on everything. Uh, I have graham crackers in the oven right now because I'm trying my own homemade ones. Hopefully they turn out okay because we're going to use those to make the crust. And anyways, yeah, we're only making a Nima bar today because the last few videos I feel like I've had so many things planned to do. I think just kind of to compensate for the fact that we're not going outside and like doing more home study things just because it is winter and there's only so much you can do. But then I always get stressed out and I overwhelm myself. So today we are just making Nanaimo bars and we're going to just try to relax. Try to just calm down. I'm going to try not to talk so fast and <laughs> just like chill out a little bit. And hopefully I will feel better as well through the process. My head will stop hurting and it'll be great. So yeah, graham crackers are in the oven right now. Two minutes left. We'll let them cool. And then we will start making our peppermint Nanaimo bars. A couple things I wanted to talk to you guys about while we're waiting. Okay, the first thing, I really need, I don't know, like, advice or encouragement. I'm not really sure. But okay, basically, here's the situation. Um, I have been getting, for the last, like, couple of months, interview requests. Not nonstop, but it's going to make it sound like, <laughs> like way more than it actually has been. But I've been getting really cool interview requests. Like, I got requested to go on Dr. Phil, to go on Piers Morgan, to go on Jesse Waters. I don't know, some guy from Fox I never heard of. Um, go on a few different podcasts. Like, I've been requested quite a bit, but you guys know me. Like, I am so shy. And I also have this thing where I, like, stutter. It's not stuttering in the classic sense. But when I'm around people and I get nervous, my brain stops working and I just like can't speak. And I'll like be mid-sentence and then stop talking and I, it takes me a couple of seconds to get the words out because I'm just so nervous. So I have that issue. I'm also just bad at communication in general. I'm really bad at talking and explaining myself and telling a good story. I always kind of ramble. Anyways, all of those fears have contributed to me not doing any of these opportunities that are actually really good. Not only for me from just a kind of selfish viewpoint where it would help me to launch my business and just get everything off the ground and actually be able to make some money so I can pay my mortgage so I can stay here. You guys know the whole drill. And also because a lot of these requests are wanting me to talk more about my story and my journey from OnlyFans to God and just rejecting modern feminism and all those things which I feel is a very important message that I really want to share and I want to get out. But, like I said, all those fears have made me not say yes. So anyways, I'm coming here to ask you guys if any of you can relate and have any of you been so bad at public speaking or just talking with people and you found a way out of that or through that to the other side and been able to actually face your fears, please let me know. I am trying my best to say yes to things that I don't really want to say yes to because, okay, hold on. I gotta take these out of the oven, and then I will keep rambling. <laughs> mm, it smells so good. It's a, they literally smell exactly like graham crackers, like honey and cinnamon. Mm. And they look like it too. So exciting. Oh my God, it smells amazing. Oh, yes. Uh, that'll serve me right for starting a conversation mid-baking because now I literally can't even remember what I was saying at all. Let's see. <laughs> Talking about how I'm afraid to interview, but how I would, oh yeah, I'm trying to say yes to things. So. As an example, you know, picking up that raw milk from that girl that I didn't know at all was very scary, but I said yes, I did it. I'm proud of myself. There's another opportunity 
with a photographer who wants to work with me, like not like paid work, but just like collaborate to do an ad for raw milk. I don't know, long story. I'll tell you guys more about it if it actually happens, but I said, yes, I'm scared. I'm going to do it, assuming it all happens. And I don't know, other things, like I'm just trying to always say yes, like there's another opportunity for Milkmaid to sell in a retail store that I was really scared about, but I said yes, and we'll see if that happens again. I'll update you guys, but I am trying my best to say yes, even though I'm terrified because seriously, the amount of times that, I don't know, I, definitely for me and maybe some of you can relate, where you feel like, oh God, why is everything so hard? Why is nothing working out? And then you take a pause and you reflect and you realize, actually God has given me so so many opportunities, so many chances to do something with my life and to be successful and to follow the plan that he has for me. But I have let my anxiety and my fear stop me. And so I'm trying to do it anymore because I'm, I'm really trying to live my life the way God wants me to. And anyways, I know that he wants me to say yes to a lot of these opportunities. But when it comes to the whole interview thing, I'm scared. Now there are some people that if they offered me to be on their show, regardless of my fear, I would without question, just I would have to say yes. And so maybe that's the thing, maybe these people just aren't really resonating with me, which is why I haven't been able to push myself to actually do some of these interviews. I really don't know, but I really need some advice, encouragement, I don't know. Just please help because I know that I really, should. like these are big opportunities that I just am too scared. So. That's something that has been on my mind. Another thing that I wanted to discuss with you guys, I guess it's okay because we'll let the cookies cool for a little bit. So I did a post recently, and I kind of always do posts on this, on the, what did I call it? The lies that I was told by modern feminism, something like that. So, hi, Maui. Well, come here then. Come here. Yeah. Oh my goodness, he plopped. Plopped. Can't say no to a plop. Zimmies. Oh, you're so cute. No, we can't go outside right now. We will soon, okay? Soon, I'm out. Oh my goodness, look at you. You're so perfect. Oh gosh. <laughs> okay, it's so hard to try to have a conversation. There's so many distractions. Maui! Yes, I love you. I love you, my sweet boy. Okay, I'm gonna quickly refilm this because what I said made absolutely no sense. Maui was being really cute and distracting as you can see. So basically what I was trying to say is I believe that our culture pushes a certain message that is aligned with modern feminism. I grew up watching plenty of shows and movies that push these ideas and I also witnessed women in my real life express these beliefs as well. Now you may have had a different upbringing and led to believe totally different things, but I think that it is without question that our culture as a whole promotes these modern feminist ideals. That is not to say that you are bad if you believe some of these things or that feminism in general is bad either. I do totally support the concept that women should have the freedom to live as they choose. And I am really grateful that I can have my own bank account and a job and everything else. However, I do believe that modern feminism lies to women and it brings the average woman total unhappiness. There are going to be exceptions but as a whole, I do believe that these are lies and that we should start speaking the truth. So some of these lies include, you don't need a man. Listen, ladies, I know we've been taught to be Miss Independent and you need a man, like a fish needs a bicycle, but you do need a man. And there is no shame in that. Kids need a father, a woman, you need a man to love you, to protect you, to provide for you, to bring you joy. There is nothing bad about needing other people. We were made for each other and that is a beautiful thing. When we are able to just relax and trust our partners, we can let our true feminine energy come out and instead of being in a constant state of fear of stress. So trust God's design because it is best. Lie number two, a nine to five job is better than raising your kids. Stay at home moms are totally shamed for choosing their kids over a career and money. People like to say that they support you living as you choose, but whenever you see someone post about how they rely on their husband financially, you are guaranteed to see a ton of comments of people saying, but what if he leaves you? Or what if he cheats on you? You need to have money of your own and be independent. So I think it's fair to say that this idea is definitely pushed in our culture and personally i believe that putting your kids and your family before everything else is amazing and i really wish that i had learned that sooner line number three getting married and starting a family will make you unhappy you really cannot
cannot deny that our culture pushes this idea okay literally every movie every show it makes fun of marriage it shows how miserable miserable everyone is the old ball and chain and everything and while there are obviously some people who have terrible marriages i've seen it i know it's ha it happens it is really possible to be happy and i can't think of a more worthwhile goal to have that living alongside someone you love growing beside them starting a family with them it's just so beautiful and god really knows what he's doing line number four this is a big one for me <laughs> promiscuity and dressing provocatively is empowering i feel like this one is so obvious but truly i really grew up believing this and it wasn't until i went so far down that path that i realized it was total bs what is truly empowering is saving the most intimate parts of yourself for someone who truly loves you and wants to spend the rest of their life with you everything else is a total lie line number five i think we're on birth control is safe if you know the risks and you decide you still want to be on it great it's your life you do you girlfriend but doctors rarely go over those risks with you or tell you what other options you have we're led to believe that birth control is our only option and it's this like holy grail but there are other effective ways to prevent pregnancy such as natural family planning and tracking your cycle which isn't as complicated as you might think and doesn't come with all of the health risks associated with birth control pills and the last one abortion is no big deal now a few people commented on this post saying no one thinks that what are you talking about you're crazy that's just propaganda but that is not true because i absolutely believed that abortions were no big deal and i'm so freaking thankful that I was never put into a position of getting pregnant before I was ready because I probably would have gotten one. So seriously, praise God for that. It is totally a lie to tell women that their best and only option is to end the life of their beautiful, innocent, unborn child. There are plenty of other options out there and the trauma that will follow you for the rest of your life is not worth it. But no one wants to tell you that truth. They want to tell you that abortion is healthcare and that abortion is essential and it is not. Okay, those are my lies of feminism and <laughs> back to the video. And anyways, that was a very bad explanation, which is another reason why I never want to go on any of these interviews because I would just suck. I would suck, but okay. Ramble aside, let's make some peppermint Nanaimo bars. Here are the graham cracker cookies. Oh my goodness, how beautiful. They smell literally so good, okay. Look at that. Mm. Definitely, I mean, I'm not really much of a s'mores kind of gal, but if I was, I would make these all the time to make s'mores. How fun is that? Really, really easy as well. I would link the recipe, but it did not take long at all to make this. <laughs> oh my gosh, this morning, <laughs> I was looking at a TikTok before and I made myself a little tinfoil hat. It's really small. I did not know how to make this. It took me a million tries. <laughs> I love it though. I'm definitely keeping it for other videos. So I am currently boiling some water to melt butter. But in the meantime, I'm going to take some of these crackers and pop them in a little bag and then hammer it to make crumbs. You could also put these in your blender as well. Both methods would work. Oh, oh my God, that is so good. Mmm, it literally tastes like a graham cracker. That is so cool. Ain't nothing that brings me more happiness than making things from scratch. Instead of buying it from the grocery store, I don't know why I'm like this, but it's the best. Ah. <laughs> okay, next step in making an enamel bars. I have got some butter here, almost melted now, over a pot of boiling water. I'm gonna pour in some sugar. And now the butter has pretty much fully melted, so I'm gonna take it off the heat and whisk in some cocoa powder. And then I'm also gonna pour in one egg that's already been whisked. And then I'm gonna put the bowl back on the water and just continue whisking for a couple of minutes to cook the egg. And lastly, for our base, we're going to add some almond slices, some shredded unsweetened coconut, and our homemade graham cracker crumbs. <laughs> and then we have a eight by eight baking tray lined with some parchment paper. And we're going to pour our base mixture into the bottom. Okay, so the bottom layer is in the fridge cooling for 15 minutes. Meanwhile, we're going to prep the middle layer, which is a kind of thick buttercream gooey deliciousness. So I've got one stick of softened butter that I'm going to put into my mixing bowl. And now we're going to add two tablespoons of corn starch, two cups of icing sugar, and now the recipe I'm following, which I will link below for you guys, calls for just vanilla bean, 
paste, but I'm gonna do some vanilla and some peppermint because I want it to be minty. And I just added some green food coloring as well. And now, using my beloved KitchenAid, we're going to blend this all up. Okay, I just got icing sugar everywhere. So definitely cream your butter first and then slowly add the icing sugar and cover with the tea towel to be safe. I'll clean now, but my word. <laughs> Literally went everywhere. And now we're gonna take our buttercream and spread it over our base layer. Mm, it smells really minty. Uh, mint anything is just, I got a soft spot for it, I love it. Okay, so there's our middle layer. I'll smooth out. Like so, we're gonna pop this in the fridge for 20 minutes. And while it's settling, I'm gonna clean because everything is sticky now, because literally ice and sugar went everywhere. So <laughs> let me clean and I'll be back. Hey baby. You look so cozy in there. <laughs> oh, you sleepy angel. Now for our last layer, I'm just melting a whole block of dark chocolate with some butter. Mm, smells really, really good. While we wait for it to finish, I gotta tell you guys something funny that happened. <laughs> so you remember last week how I told you? Oh, you're so low. Okay, you remember last week how I told you guys that for my fiance for Christmas, I was gonna get him a plane ticket for his friend to come visit us. So I gave that to him on Friday, but all, pretty much the two weeks leading up, I was just so excited. So I kept on telling him on December 1st, I'm gonna give you a present, it's really special. Like just really, really hyping it up. <laughs> And then after I gave him the present, he told me that he thought that I was pregnant and I was gonna give him an ultrasound or something like that. And he was like genuinely nervous and then he got so overthinking it because I got my period a couple of days before to the point where he literally even considered like was I pretending to have my period to throw him off the scent? <laughs> but I don't know, like I could definitely never keep that kind of thing a secret. I, if I found out I was pregnant, I would tell him literally instantly. I know some girls, I always see their videos where it's a super elaborate setup before they tell their husband or their man that they're pregnant. I just, I literally could not do that. That's not, the, I can't keep secrets, right? And that I definitely could not keep a secret. It would just be so hard. But oh my gosh, we were laughing so hard because he literally thought I was pregnant and that I was just pretending. Anyways, all went well. He's very excited. We're very excited for our friend to come. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I am very excited. Okay, I feel like it's probably melted. Here is our little tray. I've also smashed up a bunch of, oh my gosh, this smells so delicious. Now I'm using slightly less chocolate than the recipe called for. I just only had one bar. It called for 115 grams and the bar I had was 100. So hopefully that won't make too much of a difference. And into the fridge it goes to set one last time. Okay, while we wait, real quick thing that came to my mind to maybe explain a little bit better what I've been trying to say <laughs> about culture and the kind of feminism that it promotes. Now this is just an example and it really depends on what you grew up watching or if you watched things at all, whatever. But just an example, I've been watching Gilmore Girls, such a good show, I can't believe how much, I, like I totally forgot about it until it popped up on Netflix and I've just been hooked ever since. It's so good, I love just having it play in the background. It's so cozy and I just, I'm loving it. But this is such a good example, the show of the kind of life that is promoted for women these days. And I know this show is kind of old, but still it definitely proves a point. So there are literally no housewives or stay at home wives in the entire show. The closest you could get to one would be Dean, Rory's boyfriend, his mom, apparently, I don't think we ever actually see her, but she was a stay-at-home wife and apparently she's happy, but it's kind of always mocked and like, how could she like that? And then beyond that, there's also Dean's wife who is a stay-at-home wife as well, but she sucks at baking and they're always fighting and they seem really unhappy. So right there you can see that I definitely grew up believing that being a wife as your priority and being that before anything else would only bring you unhappiness and would only mean that you are pretty much like a slave to your husband. That's absolutely shown in the show. And then 
what is promoted as good, and I'm not saying that this isn't good, but also I think like personally I believe that it isn't good, is the lifestyle of Lorelai and Rory where they're kind of sleeping around, they are, have a bunch of different boyfriends and they're not really settled down, they don't know how to cook, they don't really know how to be and take care of a home and that is promoted as something that's really good and aspirational and if you are not, like again you always have to say these disclaimers but if that is not, like if that is who you are, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with you, people always like to think that you are just judging them and I'm not, but I do think for the average woman, you are gonna find so much more joy and fulfillment in taking care of your home and taking care of your family and on getting married and being with one person instead of sleeping with a bunch of different guys and kind of having that constant, like you can even see in the show, the constant, does he even like me and just the drama of it all. You're gonna find so much more joy and peace if you just settle down with one person. It has to be the right person, okay? You need to find a good man, but it's gonna bring you so much more joy and I'm just, as an example, that show and so many other shows promote a certain lifestyle that I do not think for the average girl is gonna bring them actual joy. So just an example, just trying to prove my point a little bit more. Yeah, okay. One other example from the show, I just watched this episode last night, spoiler alert, Lane gets pregnant and the whole joke of the episode is how she says that this baby sucks and she's complaining about being pregnant and talking about all the horrible things that come with pregnancy and with motherhood and it's just this horrible, horrible thing that she has to go through. Just another example, just in this show alone, but you really see this in, I swear, like every show ever. It's a very, very common idea that motherhood and marriage is the worst thing on earth. So let's take out our Nanaimo bars now. So we're just gonna pre-cut through the chocolate. And then we'll put it back in the fridge again for another 20 minutes and then we can cut the full bars. But you wanna cut the chocolate before it fully sets, otherwise when you do cut it, it's gonna crack and just make a big mess. I'm so excited about these. And we are going to a party this week, I don't know if I said that, but there's no way I could be making these right now <laughs> and then have them just sitting in the house because I would eat them all and I would get a thousand pimples back into the fridge it goes. All right, moment of truth. I'm gonna take it out of, gosh, this is the worst angle. <laughs> Hold on. Tell me why my tripod just refuses to be level. You're always lopsided. <laughs> okay, anyways, I'm gonna take it out of the fridge now and we'll see what it looks like. There we go. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Okay, I'm gonna put the rest of these in the freezer because the party is until the weekend. So I want them to stay fresh, but you can also just keep them in the refrigerator if you're gonna eat them within the next week or so. Look how amazing these look. So exciting, oh my gosh. So anyways, that's all for this video. I feel like it was all over the place and random, but I guess all my videos are. So thank you if you made it to the end. It means a lot to me. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment, and I, like I said, I will link both of the recipes I followed in the description box if you want to check them out. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Gwen the Milkmaid. Check out my beautiful small business, the Milkmaid Supply Co. I also have Shop Gwen linked below if you are in the market for any secondhand clothing. I also made a Like to Know It page recently. So if you're ever wondering what where my clothes are from, hopefully it's on there. And if not, you can always DM me or leave a comment. And. I think that's everything. So I'll send you guys lots of love. I hope you have an amazing Saturday, an amazing Saturday, amazing weekend, amazing week, and I will see you again soon. Bye. Are you going for a little ride there, Zimmies? <laughs> I see you are handsome. Are you in your boat? Are you in your boat?